Hey guys, Sean Bougie, surplusfundsriches.net. Good to see we already have some people in here. Chat is going to be, just so you know, please don't use the Q&A section. Please use the, use the comment section. Those of you guys that have been around for a while know about that. All messages are private. We've done that for a while because otherwise it gets messed up. If somebody can, hi, hey Donna. Saad, hey Sean, very good morning to you from London, UK. Fantastic. Dina, hello. Hi guys. Hi Sean from Doyle Sh and Cheryl. Can you guys hear and see me okay? Okay, reality check, top lip, hamster, doctor, someone say it back. Yes, Ethel, this is a real live webinar. <laughs> Let me do that again. Top lip, hamster, doctor, someone say it back. Uh, hello, go Lions. Got you loud and clear. Good evening, Sean. And then William from Scottsdale. Asha, hi. Can see and hear you just fine. That's good. Good evening. We can hear you loud and clear. Yes, yes, yes. Sean can see. Okay, okay. You guys know... What I do at first, I'm going to disable chat for just a second. I just needed to make sure everybody can hear and see me, okay? Quick heads up, in a thunderstorm, don't know how that's going to go down. We had an issue before we had to hit, it's called the panic button in webinar, webinar jam. So if that does happen, if we lose you for a second, just give it a minute and it'll reboot and we should be okay. Um, I know I missed the chat thing here, but another thing I want to let everybody know, uh, a lot of you guys have been around a long time. So those of you that have had our national surplus funds for a while, you know that we refresh that book as needed. Um, really wasn't a big deal. We got some grammatical mistakes we took out, cut some things out, added some things that we thought was going to be a little, a little helpful to folks. Obviously, we always update the resources page, and that always takes precedent. However, if you have purchased our national surplus funds program in the past, open it, click the link to get to the resources page, to get to the resources page, and on there, you'll be able to download a password protected new version of the ebook. And you should be able to use the password in your ebook to open that up. So, just a heads up on that, we are continuing to work on refreshing everything that we can. Real happy with the feedback I've gotten from Redemption Wholesaler. Uh, that seems to be quite a hit. And I, I appreciate all the, all the great comments on that, guys. Other than that, the sales coming up the 15th and the 16th starts at 10 a.m. on the 15th, ends on 10 p.m. on the 16th of September. If you haven't reserved your spot, please do so at this point. And we're very happy with how things are going. I'm going to be doing a board update very soon, probably in the next couple of days. Where we'll go over all the deals that are currently under contract. A lot of stuff going on right now in all over the place. If there states you wouldn't, I've never even seen before. So very good. Let's go back to chat. Wow, good evening, seeing here you perfectly, loud and clear, this is Jeffrey. I'm going to enable chat again. You guys know we got a half hour, so bring the questions, guys. Chat is now enabled. Got a good number of people in here tonight. That's great. You should be able to see it. Also, there is a file download. You should be able to download that. That is an overview of our programs and pricing for the, for the current sale. Definitely download that, or you can go to the site, surplusfundsriches.net. Click on, click on the banner at the top or products, either one. It'll take you to the products page, and that will become a sales page starting at 10 a.m. Eastern on the 15th of September. Brent says, Brent says Tucson, Arizona. Randall says can. That's it. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that means, Randall, if you think it's canned or what. William, Will I am. Again, the Black Peas are back with us tonight. Black Eyed Peas. Uh, good evening, everybody. Ken, what type of attorney do you use for overages? Good question. Now, I'm noticing that there's a Q&A thing in here from Dan. Dan, I need you to use the comment section, not the Q&A for it, please. Okay, Ken, what type of attorney do you use for the overages? Typically, we use real estate attorneys. Two easy ways to do it, guys. Remember, you're not. this isn't illegal. You're not doing anything shady. So you can call the state bar or contact the state bar and ask for a referral for an attorney that does that kind of work in your state or the state that you're going to work, rather. Or... You can actually call the court and ask them, hey, what are the names of some attorneys that have made claims for this, uh, for surplus funds or overages or whatever they call it in that particular area? And they'll, they'll usually hook you up. Let them know. I'm not looking for a referral here. I'm not putting you on the hook. I just want to know who's in and out for doing this. Sarah, good evening. I sent a claim on 810, I guess me to file, and also on 830 because I had not had a kickback or corrections. Can I resend again? Sarah, have you checked the list? Okay. Guys, when you turn something at first, check the list, the active files list, to make sure we don't already have it. Saves you time researching stuff we have. Don't have a saturation issue, but you need to do that. And then what happens is, if it's not kicked back, in other words, you're not told, hey, you forgot to fill this out or that out, which we're okay with. But if that doesn't happen, one of two things is going to happen. It's either going to get through underwriting, like 
everything's fine, in which case it's going to show up on the list. So check and see if it's on the list, Sarah. If it isn't, there's an issue and check your spam. Maybe, maybe you're being reached out to and you don't realize it, like there was an issue or something. But check the list. It should be on the list in about three business days. This. The other option is if the people have died after it goes all the way through underwriting and now we're skip tracing it. If the people have died, we're going to let you know that they're dead and we can't work it. We can't make a deal with a dead person and we only work the state type of issues in Florida, and that's with very tight parameters. Craig, I think we had a conversation, Craig, other than the Redemption Wholesaler product, missing on the spreadsheet, part of the Insider's Guide, and not being listed on Diamond Bundle's September Sale Price Guide. Are those two lists completely up to date? Yeah, they're up to date, Craig. As far as that, when you buy the Diamond, and I think you and I had a conversation, when you buy the Diamond, it has a coupon in it, and you can use that to pick up that other one. Um, this is probably one of the last times that, you, you know, the diamond will actually have last couple next couple months anyway, where there's actually a partnership uh, redemption program in there. Dan, here's my question. Register your deeds in Knox County, Tennessee. Inform me that Knox County does not have any, up, have any updated balances on liens that I would need to contact each individual lien holder directly and ask them for an updated balance on each of their specific liens. Is this required of me or how would this affect how I fill out the judgment liens history chain page of sharp? Okay, so Dan, um, you, you may have misunderstood. So we're looking for mortgages for you, anything that shows up on their website and you put the amount on that was on there. And then you can make a notice if, if there was, uh, if there's interest accrued on that particular lien or judgment, if, if you can find that. But we partake, we're looking at you checking mortgages and it's not going to give you a running total on the mortgage. It's just going to give you what the initial part was. And the ebook explains what dollar amount to put in there. Now, once you guys start doing this on your own, if you decide to do that, just so you know, in the background, if you can't find anything on, if you can find judgments, great, put that in there and put the amount in and there should be an interest rate listed, excuse me, and you'll be able to calculate that. Jeff can correct me if I'm wrong here. But the other side of that is in a lot of states, you can't look up judgments or liens that aren't related or, or uh, attached to the property. That's something we do once we get it under contract. Our attorney double checks that. Reread the ebook on that. That should go into that in depth. There, there really is a good step by step on the national surplus. Naj, how do you ensure no two associates are researching the surplus list? Sometimes you get your own list, okay? And then we have an active files list. So when you go, you get an ebook that's step by step, very in depth step by step. That is a link with a password that goes to a resources page. On there is additional video training. Please read the whole ebook before you watch that, okay? A lot of people like to skim and it doesn't work. You're, you're learning a new skill set here, okay? But then once, you do, once you've done that, you can also, when you, when you go get a list, you can take the names off your list, open up. You, can, you have access to our active files list. You can open that up and search those names to make sure we don't already have them. And there's not a really a saturation issue here, but it's really nice that you can check that. That's updated five days a week. That's pretty good. So, yeah, that's how we know if it's been turned in before. And you know, too, you'll be able to see it on there. I didn't sure. Okay. Damu. Hi, Sean. Damu. All right. Ray, Sean, explain the difference between surplus hybrid and bankruptcy gold mine. Yeah, two completely good question because I know if you if you just look at it. So bankruptcy gold mine has nothing to do with surplus funds. Bankruptcy gold mine, the bankruptcy courts are regional. Okay. Those courts, there's just under a hundred of them, have their own unclaimed money. You can get that pretty quickly and easily, list of what they're holding. And that's due to creditors. Okay. You can contact the creditor who oftentimes didn't even have a judgment in force, but they were named in that bankruptcy. And we use a unique way for going after that money. You can talk to the creditor, oftentimes give them as little as 25% of whatever's being held by the court. May not match their judgment or the amount they're owed. But because they'll assign the debt to you, not the money being held, but the debt, you're now the creditor and you can go claim it. That's the bankruptcy gold mine. That is a hot program. The other one is the hybrid, surplus hybrid. And that has to do with surplus. That's why it's got the name in it. Surplus hybrid is, let's say you're working deals and the people died or, oh, good Lord, the people died or you can't find them or they said no or whatever, or there's too much debt. And, it was not, and you're like, oh, it's a dead end. Uh, not necessarily. You can take a quick look on that. It is also using the bankruptcy court, but this is involving surplus funds. You can check to see if they went into bankruptcy two years before, up to two years after the bankruptcy, uh, or rather the foreclosure, okay? If they did, the bankruptcy court has a priority claim to everything. You can tell them where the money is, and they'll give you a 25% referral just for telling them where the money is. That's kind of a big deal. And it's a great way to work stuff that you normally wouldn't be able to work. 
Brad, Redemption Wholesale, if the property that we are looking for is a rental or other family members living in the home, you didn't really ask a question. You just kind of made a statement there. If, if the property that we are looking for is a rental or other family members living in the home, I don't understand your question, Brad. Come back to me on that and reiterate it because I've got a lot of questions that I'm, I'm going to get through before you do that again. Tab, if you use Microbelt, what is the subscription price per month per month tab? You're going to have to call Randy Mostella there. Tell him Sean Bucci or Greater Good Company referred you. But talk to Randy Mosteller. Look up microbuilt.com. I'm not blowing you off. I do really high volume. So my subscription price is for almost like an unlimited amount of volume. So I don't know what the startup is on that. I'm sorry. Uh, Minaj, duplicating the work. How do you ensure? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you repeated yourself there. Sarah, yes. Ken, real, real estate works for tax deed as well. Real estate? Throw that one at me again, Ken. Ken, I don't understand the question. Randall. Sean, can we use Zombie Business Reviver in conjunction with Bankruptcy Goldmine? Hmm. Never thought of that because a lot of people use the Zombie Business Reviver in surplus. This is where you're going after businesses that are owned surplus that uh, are owed surplus that went out of business that are no longer active. And you can reactivate them, usually buy them for nothing, like a couple hundred dollars, and then reactivate it. You have the same EIN number. You'd reactivate it with Secretary of State. We teach how to do all this in that program. Secretary of State reactivate it, and now you're the company, you bought the company, so you can go claim the money for yourself. Same thing with flipping deeds, uh, deed flipping, if you have enough time prior to the sale, the foreclosure, you can get up with a company that owns the property that's going into foreclosure, react, buy their company and reactivate it. you got to have a, a week or two to get this done, guys, and reactivate it, and then you can purchase, um, or rather, you can go in, you own it at that point, and you can pay off the taxes to stop the sale and just flip it at that point. It's a really good play, but working with Bankruptcy Goldmine, what a cool idea. I just don't think you're going to run into that often, but why not? Rachel, hello. I have 19 files. I read a little while ago. You're going to... We don't... Do, Rachel, here's what we do. So, guys, we're getting really streamlined because we've got so much coming in right now. I'm not, I'm not bragging or anything. I'm just telling you. That's where we're at. We're concentrating on putting deals together for our guys, and we're very happy with that. So, we don't do the update upon request. We tell you exactly when we get them under contract. Regardless of how many files you've turned in, we will tell you as soon as we get them under contract. And we'll also tell you when we're a couple of weeks out and then re-reach out uh, to you to let you know that it's coming. Dem Demu, Sean, CA. Okay. Sonny, if it's on the list, in what stage is it? Have you contacted owner on the stage? Had owner sign a contract? In other words, can I assume the deal will actually happen? No, Sonny. We'll contact you when it goes under contract. And we will contact you uh, again when the, when, the, when the check's coming in. Sarah, I had checklist multiple times and I've checked my junk mail, nothing. All right, then um, the only time we don't contact you, well, again, but Sarah, did you check? You checked the active files list, okay. Um, because we do not contact you if you sent in a file that was already on there with another researcher name, because all you'd have to do is look at the, uh, the, the list and you can see that somebody else got it, right? Uh, send me an email, go to surplusfundsriches.net, send me an email, there's a contact us thing, and I'll check with paperwork, uh, maybe an issue with your mail. Rachel, also, will you be doing any other videos letting people know when you have claims. Yeah, I, I mentioned we're going to do, I'm going to do an update on, is, Rachel, we call you, we email you when we get one under contract. We'll let you know. We'll let you know. Oh, I know. It was it was motivating to see that in July. I will be doing a board update video, though. Saad, I know you're offered the surplus funds 50-50 in a diamond bundle, but if I'm learning to just work on that, are you able to sell the program separately? No, that's only available in the diamond. Would love to partner with you on this program. Thank you, Sean. For redemption wholesaler, is a business license required? So you can do it. You could certainly do Redemption Wholesale or your personal name with no problems. So, no. Um, I'm signing up for the course. Can I speak with any of your students to a demo? All right, here's what happened. I'm really glad. We're getting really cool questions tonight. So, we used to have a blog where people could interact and help one another and talk and all that. Here's what we ran into with that. This was years and years ago. There was always a chest thumper on there that got on and started saying, no, this is how you do it. And it was all wrong information. Okay? And I know that most of you guys aren't like that, or all you guys probably aren't like that. But we ran into it every day. We were having to correct. And then we were having people work as admins. And we were having, there was more work. I, we finally said, hey, they can ask us. Support generally gets back in one business day. It has three business days. But they, Jeff generally gets back in one business day with questions. They can talk to us directly um, Monday through Friday. And then we also have live question and answer webinars like this one twice, uh, twice per month. So we stopped doing it because it's just, it was a nightmare because of the wrong information, the disinformation that was being put out there. Oh, but if you're talking about demo, if you want to get their view on stuff, 
just go to the site, surplusfundsriches.net, and uh, click on testimonials. Those are real videos from guys that have worked the programs. Shani, I purchased the Pro Pack in March, but got overwhelmed by all the information, didn't know where to start. Just pick a program, Shani. Uh, I want to do the partnership where I, if I claim qualified, I, I would get 8%. I think has that, has that thing changed? There's nothing changed. Open the ebook and read it at least twice for comprehension. Then click the link to go to the resources page and watch the video. Shawnee, open it and pick a program. That's the National Surplus Funds. Work that one. You don't need to learn. when Guys, when you get a bundle, it's a really smart move because then you've got multiple options on where you're going to go. But you don't have to learn them all at once. Learn one, work it. Learn another one, work it. You know what I mean? Take your time. Do it at your own pace. Nobody's, nobody's pushing you. Hasha, I have a panning question. When it says in a court document that a lien or student loan is junior and subordinate and is hereby removed from the title to the property, presumably it makes a clean deed free of debts for the purchaser. Uh-huh. However, for our purpose, do these debts still exist and count against surplus? Yes, Asha, sorry. So, guys, a lot of people bring this up. They go, they go well, oh, I don't understand why I'm even going to check that because it's kicked out by the foreclosure. Yes, it's kicked out on the house. Okay? It's not kicked out against the surplus because in addition to the deed that they removed or the lien that they removed, there's usually also a promissory note or a judgment against the person that backs that up. That's why, if you guys want to look this up online, uh, deficiency judgment. Banks get them all the time when it's a second mortgage and it sold for less, you know, not, or not enough to pay off the first mortgage and the second, they can get deficiency judgments for that. So it's still in force, even though it's a second, it's a uh, second in line. You cannot, that, that debt has a priority claim in the surplus. Great question, Hasha. I'm glad you asked it too. You didn't make an assumption. If all, what is a top partner for, for you on? Well, most of the guys, if all, we, we have guys either stick around forever they work either part-time or full-time. Um, or we have guys that come in and in six months they put money in the pocket and they've left. I've got four people this year that are on track to hit uh, anywhere from sixty to 80000 And these are guys that started this year, like in March. So February, March. But, you know, I got, I got, a, I got a funny. I actually made a video. I had a kid. Uh, kid. I'm 57, so that's everybody. Call me and say, hey. Want to know if I can make a lot of money? Well, if you apply yourself and you work it very hard and you're consistent, you can do extremely well. We have an earnings disclosure on the site for a reason. I don't know how hard you're going to work at and how smart you are. I don't know how good you are at comprehending, um, you know, the information. I don't know how good you are at following direction. I don't know if you're going to try to reinvent the wheel and screw it up. I don't know any of that. Um, and he says, okay, I understand that. And then he said, hey, I understand that, but you heard my voice, so I have a good voice for this. And I said, yeah, you got a great phone voice, but that's just a part of it, you know. And he said, well, I got to ask you the question I really want to ask. Can I make a million dollars my first year? And I said, do you have a team behind you? And have, have you run a business before on your own? He said, no. I said, then I can with almost absolute certainty say, no, you're not going to make a million dollars your first year. And the guys out there that are saying that are full crap. Okay. Can you make, I have multiple testimonials. Can you make well over a hundred thousand? You most certainly can on your own doing it with no problem. As a researcher, I'd say probably 60, 80 to hundred top end on the national surplus would be your top end. You can pretty much double that with P16 though, if you're working it. But again, we have an earnings disclosure because you may make nothing, okay? I don't know how hard you work. I don't know if you're gonna do this right. I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, right? So that's why we have that on there because I know we're not in the habit of promising pie in the sky returns for folks. Can we work heirs for surplus funds? Donna, in the Florida program, which is part of three different bundles, the gold, the best of the best, and the diamond with, with the Florida program, we can work that in some instances. Other than that, we don't want to work it. And trust me, whenever we make a decision like that, it's for your good and ours. It's a, we don't want anybody chasing stuff that's not going to work out. The number one place we find where people are lying about stuff is airship. Forgive me if that's well known. I'm an absolute newcomer to your programs. JJ. Guys, remember, don't use the Q&A section. Oh, good Lord, we're getting nonstop. Got anybody that, that puts stuff in, anybody that puts stuff in on the q and I'm not getting to that. I'm using the comment section, guys. I really need you to use the comment section. How do you research if the funds have been claimed? So A, that's all you put in there was A. So you need to either have an updated list or you need to call and check if you don't have an updated list. Most lists are updated, a new or updated list, a list that you know is being updated, or you can call and check if it's been claimed. Which three states should I start with the national surplus ready to start? William, what I'm gonna tell you is we don't leave people in the states. If you're using the national, um, go to our YouTube channel, Surplus Funds Rich is all one word, okay? 
Go to that channel and go to YouTube, search for Surplus Funds Riches. You'll find our YouTube. There's a yellow background where it says free training. Or you can go to our Facebook page and it's pinned, I think, at the top. And it's a video that is an hour and five minutes. That is one thing. Now, if you're worried about the program, just only watch the videos in your program. Don't get distracted. But the other thing we have on the Surplus Funds Riches YouTube channel is a state guide. And that will give you some insight into states. Tab, a few times my simple search for whether a person has passed away did not indicate there was an obituary. Okay. So several files have been rejected after you found that people passed away. Have you thought about starting a deceased list for us to check for those who are being found deceased? Uh, you know, Tab, occasionally we were, we were adding those on, but no, we haven't thought to do that. Um, we'd rather get stuff up and running. Plus, we found that if people find that there's already files from, from a particular county, I mean, you can, when you're in the program, you've got access to active files list. They just don't work that same county. They don't run into that. So it, it really hasn't been an option. You know what I mean? It hasn't been an, an, an issue. Ken, real estate attorneys work for tax deed averages as well, or you only use real estate attorneys for mortgage? Both, Ken. Absolutely both. Greg, I'm new. Seems I need to read the ebook first, right? How do I get the ebook, please? Greg, you buy it. Ah, that's how you get it. It'll be available again 15th and 16th of September, surplusfundsriches.net. Download the file download in front of you guys. It'll be there the 15th, starting at 10 a.m. through the 16th at 10 p.m. And yes, please read the ebook twice for comprehension. And then and only then, if you want to see also additional video training, so watch that on the resources page. Redemption Wholesale, a question part two. Sorry, Sean, hit enter by mistake. On the property being a rental or family member living in it, can these still be a good one to go after? Yeah, why not? That, that's a, in fact, you can kind of negotiate to let them stay in for a little bit as part of the deal. You know what I mean? Also, if the property is listed with a realtor, should we still contact the owner and make a deal? All right, Brad, this is uh, gray for me. This is kind of gray for me. I'm a licensed broker in North Carolina. Not a realtor anymore. I got out of that. And if anybody's out there is a realtor, I'll tell you why. The problem with being a realtor, we don't do anything unethical or anything like that, but we do a lot of flips. And we tell them when we, I, I tell them that members of the company have a real estate life. You have to tell them that, okay? We tell them that up front and that we're doing this for profit, you know, because otherwise they're going to see you. Well, I don't know this country to prevent me because he's a real, real estate agent or a broker. So we tell them all that. By stopping a, a realtor, because with realtor, if they have an issue with you, they can drag you into realtor court, right? They can drag you in there and you have to show up and that's a binding agreement. I'm dealing with the general public. I don't want them to be able to take me to court for free on something stupid, and they will if you allow them, okay? Redemption wholesale part two. So yeah, if again, to answer that question, Brad, I would probably work with the realtor as well. If you're, if you're coming up, especially you're a month out from for, foreclosure or whatever it is, and you're at that point, I would let them know what you're doing. I, I, I just want to keep a secret, and I would, want, I would want the person you're dealing with to want to tell their realtor, right? Otherwise, they're like, oh, I'm going to do this on the side kind of scammy. Ah, what if that realtor, and they won't, but what if that realtor was to go, hey, man, you signed an agreement with me and you sold it to somebody else, and I'm an exclusive listing agreement with you. You owe me 3%. I, they're not going to do that. But I don't want to just be upfront in all your dealings, guys. I tend to tell the realtors up front what I'm doing, and I'll tell them to, that I'm going to do that as well. Do you think AI will negatively affect the industry? I do not. Guys, let me tell you something else. Because people go, oh, my gosh, there's competition. That's the greatest thing ever had, had, happened to us. We have a better mousetrap. We tell them where the money is. We use an attorney in every single issue, and we give an, up, an upfront buyout. We give an upfront portion, structured buyout, and more later when we get it out. So not only... Are we contacting them using better scripts and better mailings? We have a better deal. We're giving them some money now and some money later, and we're not lying to them about where the money is. So, you know, competition is a bad thing. AI is not going to be a bad thing. I really don't. I don't think it's going to impact us negatively at all. I think that's, look, I think it's getting overblown. Security-wise, it's not. But in the rest of the stuff, I think it's getting a little overblown. And I think all that's going to really result in, in my opinion, is Google is going to launch some more stuff uh, that's going to catch all the AI-generated content and the rest of it. Shani, enter the p password and get gibberish. Then you entered it wrong, Shani. By the way, guys, the password, password-protected password stuff we got, it is bulletproof, and it is the stuff that the hospital use, hospitals use. We did that for a reason. If you left a blank after the password, you messed up. If you, Some of these programs have a password for both getting to the resources page and then another different password 
for checking out the active files list. You might be entering the wrong one. You might be entering it incorrectly. Please also, guys, don't use iPhones or Androids to try to read the ebook. Okay, use a desktop or laptop or tablet or something because, you, first of all, you're not going to be able to read it. But secondly, a lot of times the Androids and the iPhones will automatically capitalize the first letter, and that's going to blow the password, right? Make sure you're not leaving a, a space at the end. If you're copying and pasting, make sure you didn't copy the space at the end because that's going to mess it up. Best thing is to just hand enter it. Know the passwords work. I mean, I just know that. When people bug the heck out of me, I, I, I double check it, but they work. I'm telling you right now. So, Sean, if you purchase a list from, say, Tax Sale Results, sure, can I use this list to partner with you in the Circles 5050 apart from using your own files? You don't use our files anyway. You go get your own list. So, yeah, you can get, look, here's what I tell people about buying lists. You can use that if you want. The problem I see with buying lists instead of using our systems to get a list yourself is I can tell it's guaranteed that list you're buying is being sold to at least 100 other people. So you know it's worked versus a list you got yourself, maybe not, or at least not as hard, right? Something to consider. It's not hard to list, get lists on, online, guys. Go to Surplus Funds Riches, our YouTube channel, and look at that hour and five minute training before you, before you buy, okay? It gives you a great idea what you're getting into, and it even, even shows you how easy it is to get lists. What's the best program for a brand new person? I thought it's, it's the highest bundle you can buy that's not going to put you out. If you if you stretch for money, get the National Surplus Fund Program for $5.97. Hasha says, got it. Thanks, John. Send me some work. Absolutely, Hasha. We don't want to. Whenever we make a rule, guys, where there's, okay, hey, we can't take this or that, it's always in, in both of our best interests, you know? Kristen, so who pays the deficiency judgment? Well, so first of all, Kristen, my point with that was debt that was against the person or property recorded in the same county as where the house was located. That debt, if it was enforced before the foreclosure, that has a priority claim to the surplus. That's a priority claim. Now, as far as deficiency judgments, let's say there wasn't a surplus. It sold for what it was worth, right? But the bank is out or it was sold for less. The bank is out 30 grand. They could get a deficiency judgment against the mortgage holder. It depends state by state. But look up deficiency judgment. Google is your friend, guys. Sean, being British, in order to partner with you on a 50-50, do I need to have an LLC for your paid commission checks as your researcher? You can wire commission funds directly from your account. I can wire. I would charge you for the wire side because it's going to be over overseas wire, right, international. That's going to be expensive. My problem with you using getting a 50-50 if you're in the UK, listen to me carefully, everybody. If you're trying to work this from outside the United States, if you're working 50, trying to work the surplus 50-50 with a Premier 16, you're required to call them, to get in touch with them to make sure you got the right person, and you want to speak with us. They have made a claim. We negotiate, but you're required to do that. Now, in order to do that, you're going to need a good skip tracing system. You're not going to be able to get any of the good skip tracing systems in the U.S. unless you have uh, an address in the United States that they can check. They can come out and see there's a room, excuse me, a room with a computer that locks, and you're going to have to have a U.S. bank account uh, in, in a company name in order for you to get just the skip tracing portion. So if you're out of the country and you can't do that, you need to do the national surplus and let us find people. Fantastic question, son. Randall, Sean, for instance, if a business goes under and a debtor that owes the company money and files bankruptcy, there are now assets available to the claimant that business is resolved. I can buy the business and claim the fund. Yes. And then after you claim the funds, go in and deactivate the business again just to make sure there wasn't additional debt out there. The beauty is, though, you can check for additional debt on the Secretary of State's website. Look for um, UCC claims. Typically, that's where people put claims against companies in addition to the county. They'll put a UCC uh, filing on with the Secretary of State and tell if there's any other debt out there that could phantom debt that could jump at you. you know, that's an ebook. Good question. Lawrence, how often should you check county listing updates? When working the 16 program, do I need to check the DNC list? I don't know what the DNC list is, man. Guys, Listen, let's talk spe uh, specificity. Let's use specific language, and let's pretend like we don't know. Everybody doesn't know everybody else's thing, right? You need to check the, the surplus funds list, and you need to go back there. But you're going to be working multiple lists. Don't think you're going to be working the same list over and over. Can you provide us with the email address? Yeah, just go to uh, he Francis is what that's listed under. Go to uh, surplusfundsriches.net. Click on Contact Us. Surplusfundsriches.net. Contact us. Points for attempting to say my name. <laughs> The fact you actually is the biggest one. Thanks, Apple. Mozilla, are there other post-redemption states? 
Yes, and you can look that up if, if you're working a redemption program. Just plug in um, post-sale redemption states. You'll probably see an article from NOLA, N-O-A, N-O-L-A. It's an attorney-run site, and you get a list of them. Be careful you check this fine print. For instance, technically, Florida is a post-sale redemption. Everybody re lets you redeem up to at least a day before the sale, pay it off, right? But Florida is a post-sale. Oh, you're allowed to, after the sale, you can still redeem the property. Yeah, until they record the certificate, right? Until they record that. And when they do that, it's done. And that usually takes just a couple of days or a week. So it's really not a post-redemption period that you can work. You follow me? So always look at the time period involved. Hi, regarding national surplus, I was under the impression that you will not accept files for the last deed holder before the foreclosure is an LLC. That's correct. We won't. However, I do see LLCs listed on the files work list. Can LLCs be worked on or any? Only, uh, we only do that in certain instances. I think we've stopped it altogether. I think that's a recent change. Guys, you know, people try to do that. I'm not saying you're trying to do this, Katie. Please forgive me if I'm not trying to upset you. People do this gotcha things with us. Sometimes it was in a person's name, but they missed a transfer, and we were working with that individual that's in charge of the LLC or whatever. Just read the resources page. And you can, of course, ask support, and he'll tell you what we will and we'll take, will not take. Jeff handles the front line, and I don't. So I can't speak to that because I'll, I'll give you the wrong answer. Katie, okay, got that. Yeah. Jeff says the same. There are files on the list. They were submitted prior to the no LLC. Well, also, you can work LLCs with surplus 50-50. You can. I'm glad you said that, Jeff, because I forgot all about that. Again, Jeff handles the front line and support, and he underwrites all your files. Also, and he writes more than half of the ebooks. Uh, I'm handling the back end and the crew and all that. That's my thing and the attorneys and uh, claimants. Also, you can work LLCs with surplus 50-50 and Premier 16. You're allowed to do that. So that's why you're going to see overlap on the file. Oh, this guy said this. And guys, whatever you do, do your thing, right? Don't get worried about you know, somebody else's way. Rules are the rules. We're not, we're not playing favors with anybody, okay? I've gone beyond the time. If you still have questions for me, I mean, pre-purchase, pre-purchase questions. You haven't bought a program. Because if you bought a program, you use the email-based support through Jeff as outlined in your ebook, right? But if you haven't, you have questions after this, please first download this file download right now because I'm about to shut this down. Um, and then also go to surplusfundsriches.net if you can't do that or there's an issue. Surplusfundsriches.net, go to the products page, click the banner at the top of products, go to that, and there's downloads halfway down. I go over every single program we've got, and they also go, go over pricing. So you've got all that in front of you. Once you've read all that, you still have questions, call me direct, 704. This is 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S. 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. 704-791-9398. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.